Uh, you also have the teal foundation that has these three elements to it. And one of the elements is the teal fellowships in which you go back with 30 awards a year. 20 a year, yeah. Uh, 20 a year, uh, two year award for people to do great research. I'm assuming that part of this is your dismay about the current state of American universities. Mm -hmm that there's a kind of creativity or innovation that's either not sufficiently nourished or not sustained or even uh, damped down in American universities. And since I'm a university professor, <laughs> I have tenure so I could say what I want, but nevertheless, I, I think universities and what we do for, stu for our students is amazing things, but you're somewhat, you have a jaundiced view of American universities. So tell, tell us why. Well, um, well, it's always a, it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a, again, it's a, I, I certainly think that we are in something of an educational bubble, is the way I always like to describe it. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been in an age of bubbles in all sorts of areas, mm -hmm. and I think there's also a, a bubble in education, and it's, um, and it's, uh, it's manifested by the ever-rising uh, tuition costs on, on universities. So the question of what universities are doing um, is a very different question at a certain tuition level. Um, mm -hmm. And if the tuition is four times as much, which is roughly what they've risen since 1980, adjusted for inflation, um, you'd, uh, you'd end up with a very different, uh, different uh, set of questions. Mm -hmm. We now have you know, $1.3 trillion of student debt it was, it was only 300 billion in 2000. It's gone up by something like a factor of four hmm. in nominal dollars in, in 15 years. Um, and, uh, and, then, and, and so I think at that level, we have to ask far more critical questions about, um, you know, is the education worth the debt that people are assuming? And it's a, it's a very pernicious uh, form of debt because uh, um, under uh, President uh, Bush, uh, 43, they rewrote the bankruptcy laws so you can never get out of student debt even if you go personally bankrupt. Um, and you, you pay off your student debt for the rest of your life. And if you haven't paid it off by the time you're 65, they garnish your social, social security to pay off your student, uh, student loans. And so, um, so I think uh, it's sort of incumbent on us to ask some very tough questions about um, how, well, um, how well education is actually working because it, it has, has taken on, um, on these, these, uh, these very different uh, roles and because of the enormous costs that are being uh, being attached to it, um, the way that I've, um, the way I've, uh, the economic uh, sort of description of it is, mm -hmm. is often: what kind of a good is education? Is it an investment? Mm -hmm. So you're going to college as an investment into a future, or is it um, a consumption good, where it's like a four-year party? <laughs> um, and so, um, the, and these are these are two very different kinds of things. Um, and often, and I, when I started my critique of colleges, I thought it was sort of a weird superposition of an investment good and a consumption good, which is why people were confused. So they thought they were investing, but they were really consuming. Mm -hmm. um, but I've now come to think that um, it's actually um, a combination of two things that are much crazier than those two. Even it's on the one hand, it's. Um, um, the main reason people go to college is actually as an insurance product, where um, people go to college because they're scared of falling through the very big cracks in our society. Mm -hmm. And so even if, um, even if it's not a great investment, it's still important to buy insurance. This is why parents save up so much money to send their, their kids to, the, um, to college, and then why uh, the kids take out so much in, 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 uh, in student uh, debt. And, and so I think we should... And when, whenever people are spending this much on insurance, I think we should be asking the underlying question, mm -hmm. why have the cracks in our society gotten so big that uh, people are spending more and more on insurance? Um, and that would be a, a good question for us to ask. And in some ways, it gets obscured by the education piece. So on the one hand, it's an insurance product. Right. But then on the other hand, it's, it's on some level, it's a, it's a tournament, where, um, which is which is the exact opposite of an insurance, where um, especially the sort of elite universities are driven by exclusion. And, and the sort of the thought experiment I give is, if you were the president of Harvard or Stanford or any of these places, if you wanted to get lynched by a mob of students, faculty, and alumni, 
what you should do <laughs> is you should give a speech saying that because you're such a great college and you're educating people so well, you're going to triple enrollment. Um, and it's because the value of the elite universities comes from excluding people. Um, um, and um, what they really are is like, it's like a Studio 54 nightclub where you want there to be an enormous line of people outside and you don't want to let anybody in. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's, that's what a tournament looks like. And that's very different from an insurance policy. And, uh, and so when you conflate a tournament with an insurance policy um, and superpose those two, I, I think you end up with some, some really wacky decisions. <laughs>